Hello. Hello. Thank you for coming. I'm Min Kyung Lee from KAIS who is presenting the paper Pokering. And I'm going to present the first half of the paper. And Sung Woo Jae, the first author, is going to present the rest of it. So it is also collaborated with Yoon Ji Kim, also from KAIST, Lee Wei Chan from NCTU, and Sing Dong Yang from Dartmouth College, and is advised by Andrea Bianchi. So we just saw a wonderful paper using haptics on the wrist, I mean the smartwatches. So, and the first paper we saw in this session was about the haptics on its fingertip. And at this point, we should not forget that there is also a body part that is also a very good place for haptic usage. Between the fingertip and between the finger, the proximal phalanx, our fingers. So the fingers is sensitive like fingertips and is also a socially acceptable place for wearables. And also the direct contact with the finger skin is possible. So the smart ring is increasingly popular haptic research topic. There has been several related works using haptics on the fingers. For example, like vibrations, thermal changes, skin dragging, squeezing, and so on. And there also was a related work using poking. In this related work, poke yielded the lowest error rate and fast reaction. However, this previous work has limitation in the use of poking, for example, the number of actuators used to poke the finger. So, uh, <laughs> another haptic ring, skin dragging ring, adopted multiple target locations. So we come up with this idea to use poking on, around the finger at multiple locations. So we wanted to design expressive and accurate haptic notifications using poking. At first, we wanted to know how many actuators we can use around our finger. So we wanted to understand the feasibility of non-planar poking and to discuss the limits of perception with different numbers of actuators. So we tested 10, 8, 6 actuators for the study. These actuators were placed symmetrically around the longitudinal axis of the finger. Why we come up with this number, we first divided the average female finger circumference by minimum spatial resolution on the proximal phalanx. So we came up with max 10 actuators, and regarding the symmetricity, we tested 10, 8, and 6. To do the test, we built a puck box with acrylic sheets and small solenoids and Arduino in our customer's custom shield. Uh, actually, the figure on the right is video, so you can see that there is a solenoid poking the finger. And the actuators were attached to the removable panel so that we can easily change the con configuration of the actuators from 10 to 8 to 6. For the test, we recruited 30 participants, and the participants' ring sizes was between 5 to 11. After a short introduction to our POC ring, POCing was presented randomly to the participants. Our participants tested full balanced eight, 10, six configurations. So unsurprisingly, more actuators cause higher error rates. So 10 configuration was the hardest to recognize, and the six configuration was the easiest. However, the sixth configuration was only marginally better than the eight configuration. So there was no statistical differences found here. And when, and when you compare this poking, eight poking configurations with that of skin dragging ring, we could figure out that poking yielded 14% higher accuracy than skin dragging ring. So how many actuators do we need around our finger, we decided to use eight actuators at equidistant location around the finger. So from now on, Sung Jae is going to present. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> so based on the result of study one, we built a smart ring. The name is Pokering. It has eight small solenoids and 
It was 3D printed with PLA. This has two sides, US 8 and 11. Now, we want to know, will this ring work in real life? So we aim to investigate whether the poke ring prototype work in a semi-realistic mobile conditions. So in this study, we considered both the posture of the user and the poking style of the ring to mimic real life scenarios. We choose standing and working for the posture of the users. Also, we want to verify whether temporal variation of poking stimuli, such as a double poke in the same spot, has influence on the perception. Finally, we have a total of four conditions, standing single, standing double, working single, working double. For the test, we recruit 30 participants whose link size is 8 and 11. After demonstration about our poking poke ring, participants were present with random poking. All participants were tested fully balanced for configuration. From this result, we conclude that participants did not find any of con condition easier or harder and performed equally well, slightly lower than the accuracy, accuracy achieved in the same configuration with the poke box in study one, 78%. And the great majority of errors across conditions are due to the misrecognition of a point for its adjust location, one error. These findings suggest the successful encoding of information could benefit from both temporal and spatial encoding, rather than resorting to spatial encoding alone. So, the next study is for this hypothesis. Okay, let's deliver real information using both temporal and spatial encoding. For the goal, we conducted a design workshop and a user study on the recognition. And we did analysis to understand the transfer of poking pattern. For designing poking pattern, we recruit six graduate in Student from industrial design department. Three had working work experience in companies. One designed haptic motions for a commercially available haptic device. The designers were asked to design seven information from Shiraz's paper. As you can see, calendar, call, mail, game, messenger, social media, and system. The designer followed these three design rules. First, only one poke at a time is possible, and each poke location must be adjust, adjacent to the previous without any gap. And last, a pattern can at most contain eight pokes. Designers designed poking pattern using, using eight actuators. After that, they create an affinity diagram and use it to reach a consensus about how each information state should be represented. Finally, they were asked to translate the patterns for the eight configuration into the four point and two point configurations. In the post interview, the designer said designers use the length of the motion to indicate importance and directional change to indicate emotional arousal. This is the final pattern with eight actuators. The, the video on the right present pattern of call. This is the final pattern with four actuator. The video present pattern of game. This is with two actor. The video on the right present pattern of nail. These are all the final patterns. The final patterns for each configuration were implemented in the poke rings. For the recursion study, we recruit 30 participants whose left index finger fit to link size 8 or 11. Also, after demo demonstration, participants learn poking pattern as long as they wanted. In the experiment, poking patterns were present randomly to the participant. The results show us all the patterns are performing, performed equally well with high accuracy. These results 
strongly support the feasibility and performance claim of Pokrins. Okay, our paper we show that it is possible to achieve accurate notification by poking up to eight points around the finger. From the second study, we conclude that pokering is viable methods for notification in real wearable scanner scenario. Lastly, designers designed poking pattern that has rational, and the results show it can transmit seven more mobile notifications with high accuracy. Comparing poking with other notification modalities such as to buy two tactile array or skin drag ring, it is capable of rendering more information, has high accuracy and faster. So we conclude that poking around the finger is suitable for expressive notifications. Uh, based on the result, we suggest simple three applications. First application is call notification that identify who is calling. And second application is activity eye-free communication like emoji using haptic. Last application is car, navi car navigation system. Also, our paper has several limitations. The current device size is technically limited. So future work will attempt to miniaturize the link. Also, study did not individually explore the different properties of poking. We will conduct to, conduct to ascertain the effect of each individual component, such as force, speed, duration of stimuli. Also, we will investigate either the usage of pokering on different fingers or multiple simultaneous poke within a single device. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I'm Yong Gyeong Chae from KAIS. Uh, uh, in your application, there are so many patterns you can simulate with a link, but I think the pattern is, looks pretty difficult for user to remember. So my question is that, uh, could the user remember the older pattern without confusing? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, in the study, we tested three information. Uh, it is as you know, many you guys know that seven is the magic number. So result of study three, we can conclude that at least people can remember and distinguish seven different information about mobile notification and the mobile notification from the reference paper. So we conclude that people can remember and distinguish it. I, okay. <laughs> Hi there, Paul Stromer, Copenhagen University. Um, I was intrigued at some point you said that uh, you showed single pokes and double pokes, and you said that they were all equally good. And before that, you showed um, uh, single pokes at different locations. Yes. And something I noticed is that there seemed to be a consistent pattern that the poke at the top of the finger was recognized well, and the poke at the top left was not. Um, and that pattern changed with the double taps. And it's hard for me to tell if that was just noise or if there was something interesting there. Um, but I'd be interested to hear more about that, if you can say more about that. Uh, uh, that's a good question, I think. Uh, actually, uh, in the first study, we, we, the goal is that we want to distinguish the how many actually we need. So the, in the result, maybe uh, in the result, yes, here. When some parties, the difference has different Accuracy, but uh, no significant difference. That's because the, some participant did too many wrong in the same spot or something like that. So the, no, we cannot find significantly difference. And the goal, main goal is the, how many actuators we can use. So first study, I think. So, so in the center image between the 56% yeah. recognition rate and the 92%, there's yes, no right. significant difference? Yeah, that's okay. because when the two people Two people make error, many, so that's, that's because so we 
So we have same question about this. So we statically analyze this, but we cannot find the difference. So we choose the eight. Okay, cool. Thanks for the answer. Yeah. Um, uh, hi, I'm Jackie Yang from Stanford University. I noticed uh, what you have one shot of user performing the user study and user uh, wearing a earmuff. Um, what's the reason of that? Uh, because uh, actual uh, the earmuff. Yes. Why they use? Uh, yeah. Because we want to we want to defend all the another another effect. For example, when the solenoid move, it maybe it causes the sound. We want to this. Detect, defend, or the okay. Like kind from of our subjective point of view, is the solenoid uh, loud? Like, is the actuator loud? One more time. Um, is the actuator loud? Like, for your ring, is ah. do, do you subjectively? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the first study is little loud, but second study no noise. I think. Oh, so, so what's the difference? Uh, uh, first study is we use the very big solenoid, so it generate big force. Oh, okay. Yeah, but so, I thought, like, I see and the first study we used the the solenoid used a spring for the back. Okay. But the second study, the smart ring used just magnetic field using pull and back. Got so it. second study does not make many noise, and so yes. Cool. Thanks. Um, one small question. So um, when you design the pattern, have you tried if you like actuate all seven of the solenoid, but just but not one, like? You, all of your patterns, like you actually feel of the solenoid. I'm, I'm interested in whether you can distinguish if you actuate most of them but left a few one out, ah. whether they can distinguish. I think that part we have to invest, investigate future work because we, based on the further study, so we use just one single poke. Okay. So I think we have to do that. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Sun Jung Kim from Arto University. So in the first study, you used the big solenoid, and in the second, you used a miniature one. So is there any difference in force that applied to the fingertip? And uh, that difference force can make some any difference uh, uh, in terms yes, of yes. the information transfer. Yeah. Uh, so that's worth our limitation. But I think at the first study, we, the solenoid has 5 Newton in the spec. And second study, we measured, and I think uh, maybe I have to double check, but it does not big matter in the study, big, make big difference in the study. Uh, uh, we also mentioned that uh, error rate, uh, sorry. I think I can explain after this presentation. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Let's thank our speaker.